Hello, welcome back. We, uh, my name is Pete Cabin. I'm CEO of Mechanism, a San Francisco-based production company. And uh, thanks very much to Variety for including us as uh, sort of the warm-up act for the next uh, panel. So I'm going to give you about give you guys about 15 minutes of sort of branded entertainment, social media, comedy, case study craziness. Um, so it's going to be a lot less talking. You guys can just relax and watch and listen. Um, so San Francisco, uh, Mechanism is based in San Francisco and New York, and we've got uh, about a 50-person production company that uh, is about seven years old. And one of our uh, campaigns that we're going to show in a few seconds here, um, I'm going to take you back about five years, which in internet and social media time is like pre-YouTube, um, when we, we were started the company based on the idea that storytelling was the, the really the good part of what was inside a 30-second TV spot. <clears throat> but with all the possibilities of new technology, uh, emerging media, technology trends, fragmentation, you name it, things were just gonna have to change. So we, uh, we based our company based on that simple concept that uh, storytelling was the key, but the technology would just keep changing over and over again. So I'm gonna take you guys through a couple different quick uh, case studies and uh, little pieces. This first one is from Sega. And uh, if you guys are ready to roll the clip uh, for Monkey Ball, you may have seen this back about five years ago. The true adventures of Chad The guy who was so into Super Monkey Ball Deluxe That he decided to live in a bar Tune in for more of the true adventures of Chad, the guy who was so into Super Monkey Ball Deluxe that he decided to live in a ball. <laughs> so we had, uh, we had a blast making that, and um, Sega, who is one of our clients, and we're sort of this hybrid, tribrid of uh, a creative uh, agency, a production company that can shoot and animate and do web stuff. And then the third part is uh, more now than in the past when we made this, uh, a syndication social media business that we've started. And so the idea is that we can concept, produce, and then distribute and use analytics and so forth to track what used to be called viral, uh, now is sort of becoming called social or earned media programs that really complement uh, traditional paid media you know, package of banner ads and television spots and print and radio and so forth. So we really play in that niche. And um, the reason I thought to show this is to, this was a, a, a simple, not very expensive piece that was just based on a cool idea that we really had a lot of fun with, but it really did go viral. And then along came YouTube and made it very, very, very difficult to have anything be viral because of the entire internet was just loaded with video. So that, that's what triggered us to start to think more about how do you get the audience engaged in the distribution of the content and so forth. So um, I'm gonna show you another piece that uh, we recently did. This actually won, um, a can lion this year for in the experimental digital category in in, um, in France, and uh, this is for Golden Grams. How many people had Golden Grams for breakfast this morning? All right, maybe tomorrow. Um, so this was something where we actually decided to get the audience engaged in the writing process, and this was very hard for us as writers to go ahead and sort of give up creative control. But um, with social media, obviously, there's so much about trying to get engagement to actually happen, and with between a brand and the audience members. Um, we were trying to find new ways to keep up at the speed of the real-time web, get input, and then go into production as, as, as soon as humanly possible, and then get the content back out there for everyone to play with so, and redistribute. So um, if this is ready, why don't you go ahead and roll this? Oh, 
Of course I'm fluent in Dutch. Ah, oh, your business partner is Dutch. Here he is. Hi, Dag. Yeah, yeah, the beacon say hi. Newton, Shotton, Burton, Newton. Newton, Shotton, Burton, Moogin. Yeah, yeah, Burton, Moogin, Moogin. What, that's not Dutch? Oh, wait, you must be from the north. Okay, you caught me, I lied. That is a true and very ridiculous job search story that someone typed into the Golden Grams Golden Grant website. Lots of other people typed in their ridiculous stories, giving us everything we needed to twist tweets into animated comedy. The stories kept coming, and we animated over 50 of them. I woke up to the interviewer attempting to give me CPR. A giant fly flew right into my mouth. <laughs> was running late to my interview and really had to pee. And someone saw. I hope it never happens to anybody else. These sad but funny stories turned out to have a happy ending because we randomly rewarded visitors with a stimulus package, a year's worth of golden grams, so they wouldn't go hungry while looking for a job. The campaign was driven solely by a syndication program that engaged high-profile digital influencers. That led to coverage by Tony Hawk and Tosh.0. Without a dime spent on paid media, the campaign earned thousands of Facebook fans and Twitter followers, and over a million video views. But most importantly, we created a comedically cathartic home for Generation Unemployed to share their stories, laugh, and win some Golden Grams. All right, who's going to have golden grams tomorrow for breakfast? Come on, help me out. All right, two people, that's good. Um, so the thing that was really cool about this is when we were concepting, uh, in collaboration actually with an agency in New York called McCann that you guys may have heard of, um, we worked creatively with them. We worked on the production and we handled the syndication and uh, community outreach. And um, the way we landed on that production style was what's going to be the fastest thing in the world to animate, or film for that matter. And so we're really trying to figure out interesting ways to keep up with the speed at which social media conversations happen, draw those communities into a place where they can contribute, and then add value to tweets, for example. I mean, Twitter didn't exist not too long ago, so this is a very strange way for us to think as a production company and, and creative shop. And we were able to turn around animations in, I think, like four days. We had four animators doing you know, the simple, simple pencil drawings, and then giving them back to the community. And then the community functions as the media buy because they're invested in, in, this, in their ideas and then they spread them out to the audience. And, that, and we have analytic systems that can track it all. So there's a lot of fun stuff that's happening here. And um, this is a, a pure digital piece, but I'll show you guys some things that start to cross over into TV and so forth, if, uh, if time permits. Um, so uh, another campaign we did, which uh, has nothing to do with cereal, uh, recently was for the Olympics. And um, they were interested in trying to re-engage with their audience of, uh, actually a younger audience, that was um, in the 15 to 18 year old range and were really watching a lot more X Games and, and possibly getting disconnected from what was happening with the traditional marketing. So we um, came up with a program called the Best of Us Challenge that uh, we'll run a, run a clip on and give you guys a sense of what it's all about. Leading up to the 2010 Winter Olympics, the International Olympic Committee approached us for help in getting kids around the world excited about the Games. Despite being one of the more iconic brands in the world, the Olympics face an uphill battle attracting and keeping the attention of kids ages 12 to 19. With the advent of the X Games and extreme sports over the years, interest in the Games was at an all-time low. To help address this, we created a campaign embedded in social media, where our target spends their time a global interactive experience geared at inspiring youth to share the Olympic spirit, the Best of Us Challenge. With the simple strategic thought, can you beat an Olympic athlete? We traveled the globe filming Olympic athletes while also supplementing this with footage the athletes shot themselves. No fancy catered sets, nothing to give them an advantage. They were on a level playing field with the youth they were challenging. And this was the catch. The challenges all had to revolve around silly human tricks that any armchair athlete could compete in. Swimming hero Michael Phelps putted golf balls into plastic cups. Rafael Nadal picked up as many tennis balls as he could in 30 seconds. Gold medal gymnast Sean Johnson tossed an egg with her best friend. Skier Lindsey Vaughn said hello to all her fans in all of their languages. With athlete videos in place on the site, 
users were given the option of creating their own challenge that would be open to the entire world. Visitors to the site were asked to select any one of the athlete challenges, to which they could then try to best that challenge. From there, they were given simple instructions to upload and submit their video to the challenge and to YouTube. Users were given every tool to promote their challenge necessary. Widgets were offered up, as well as simple options to tweet or use Facebook to share their submissions. The participation was astonishing and a true show of Olympic spirit. Kids were participating from around the globe and interacting with high-profile athletes and their peers. To build buzz and word of mouth, we reached out to digital media stars. They challenged the athletes themselves, helping spread the message to their own fan base on their blogs, Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, and YouTube pages. This sparked waves of participation among their own fans and followers. Some of the influencers who participated were Veronica Belmont of Texilla, Brian Lamb of Gizmodo, AJ Delario of Gawker's Deadspin Sports Blog, Sarah Austin of Pop17. We sparked a dialogue with the armchair athletes. The Best of Us Challenge was a live conversation with the community, where we would promote their individual challenges the same way we promoted the athletes. The Best of Us Challenge has proven to be a huge success. Millions of social media impressions, more than four million video views, hundreds of thousands of unique site visits, and coverage on the Today Show and the New York Times, all without a dime spent on paid media. So that was fun. Did you guys notice Michael Phelps' mustache on that thing? <laughs> Serious handlebar. So um, a lot of uh, the progression from the monkey ball piece from five years ago when this emerging platform of Facebook wasn't yet public. It was still, I think, private in, in the college campuses. And YouTube wasn't quite there. Twitter didn't exist yet. And no one had even figured out that Twitter could exist yet, frankly, I don't think, at that point. Um, fast forward to some of these, the last two. Um, with the real-time web nature of the web and thinking about less linear production models, but thinking about more interactive, like give cameras to people, but try to get the user-generated content to actually be good by producing some of it yourself and pairing people up, and that creates a really fantastic spark of community engagement, which is really what we're, t we're typically looking for in our campaigns. So um, one last piece, which we'll uh, show, uh, and then we'll maybe have a minute or two for questions, uh, depending on the timing of this thing. Um, was uh, for Tostitos. And this is a campaign that we developed uh, with Element 79 in Chicago, a really terrific uh, creative agency that we collaborated with to come up with these ideas um, for something called No Laugh. And um, this should be ready in a second. And this was the engagement that people spent, um, the length of time was amazing that people spent with this branded entertainment piece, far beyond you could ever get with a banner ad, for example. So let that one roll. Like an unchecked case of ringworm, fun has exploded on our society as a scourge touching each of us, every man, woman, and child in an awkward and weird and uncomfortable way. Tostitos had a challenge. They wanted to get their tortilla chips to appeal to a new target demographic, the 25 to 35 year old heavy social snacker. Traditionally, the Tostitos corn chip had been perceived as boring and stuffy by the target demographic and largely overlooked in favor of edgy competitors like Doritos. Research provided by Frito-Lay showed that their audience had a propensity to be active and participate online. As a result, we developed an online buzz campaign based around a fictional organization, No Laugh. Here at No Laugh, the National Organization for Legislation Against Fun, we're dedicated to putting the un in fun. Come on. I'll show you how it works. At the center of the campaign, a full screen video site showcasing No Laugh and their ongoing crusade against all things fun, especially the pleasure that comes with eating Tostitos. La croque, monsieur. You with me? Sure you are. Doesn't matter. Next. The shorts include Q&A sessions with seven hopeful No Laugh members, meetings, and demonstrations, totaling almost an hour of interactive content that reveal how and why to fight fun. I was thinking of misinterpreting a few things you say and taking offense to them. Uh, is that something that would be of interest to you? What's that supposed to mean? Um, what kind of pants should I wear under my normal pants? Cords. I would wear three pairs of cords. All traffic was driven to the site entirely through non-traditional outreach. Call us today at nolaugh.org. That's 555-nolaugh.org. Seven. 
Our content syndication program built awareness for the campaign by seeding and promoting 20 No Laugh viral videos on over 50 user-generated content sites and outreach to hundreds of blogs and digital influencers. With zero dollars spent in traditional media, No Laugh has become an overwhelming success, drove almost half a million users to nolaugh.org and generated over four million viral video views, engaging millions at a fraction of the cost of a traditional media buy. We're dedicated to scraping fun off the society like a cheese grater might scrape something. Come on. Good morning. Shut up. Get back to work. All right, so that's the working mechanism. Thanks so much for warming it up. Appreciate it. It's been a dream of mine since I was a small child to uh, be the opening act for Michael Yanover. And um, I just today is that day. So we'll hand it over to these guys for the next session. Thank you.